Hey guys, so in this video we're going to start solving equilibrium questions that are two-dimensional and I'm going to give you an example of a classic problem in equilibrium that is the ladder problem. Let's check it out. So, so far we've solved equilibrium problems that were essentially one-dimensional, meaning all the forces acted in the same axis. Either you had all the forces in the x-axis or all the forces in the y-axis, most of them in the y-axis. And even if you had something um, at an angle like this, uh, let's say you had something like this, that's still essentially one-dimensional because the angles were the same when we wrote the torque equation and they canceled. So in all the problems we've solved so far, um, sine of theta in the torque equation never really mattered because it either canceled or it was just the sine of 90, which is 1. Now we're going to finally solve some problems where that's not the case, right? We're going to actually have to worry about the angle. Now, more advanced problems, as it says here, will include problems in two dimensions, in two axes, and some of them, in some of these cases, we may need to decompose the forces. Some of them will be decomposed. Um, remember, however, that torques are scalars. Torques are scalars, so we will never need to decompose them. Okay? So we're going to decompose forces in problems, but we don't have to decompose torques because torques are scalar. They may be, um, they may be positive or negative, but they are scalars. They don't have a, a vector direction, all right? So let's check out this problem here. Uh, we have a ladder of mass 10 kilograms, so M equals 10, and it's uniformly distributed. What that means is that the MG of the ladder will happen, will act right at the middle, so I'm going to do this here and say this is 2 meters, and this here is 2 meters as well. All right, the ladder has length 4, that's why I did 2 and 2, and it rests against a vertical wall while making an angle of 53 with the horizontal shown. So this is 53. This, by the way, um, because this is 90, this is 53, this is 90 minus 53, which is 37. So let's just put that there. We're going to calculate a bunch of stuff. These are all the things you might see in a classic uh, ladder question. Um, I want to find the normal force at the bottom of the ladder um, and a bunch of other stuff. But before I read the list, let's talk about what forces we have here. So you have an mg that pulls you down. Obviously, there's a normal here that pushes you up. Um, because the ladder is resting against the vertical wall, there's also normal right here. And normal is always perpendicular to the surface, so normal is going to be like this. So there are two normal forces here. There's normal bottom, and there's normal at the top. Now, notice that we want, obviously we want this ladder to be um, in complete equilibrium, so all forces cancel and all torques cancel. But if you look at the, what, what we have right now, there's a force going to the left, but there's no forces going to the right. Uh, at least I haven't drawn them yet. That means that this this ladder would not be in equilibrium. There has to be a force going to the right, and that force will be friction over here. And because we are, uh, we want the ladder not to move, this is static friction, okay? So there's enough forces that everything can. So these are all the forces you're gonna have. Um, I can write that the sum of all forces in the x-axis equals zero. Um, what this means is that the forces in the x cancel each other. So I'm gonna have normal top, uh, let me put it down here. I'm going to have that normal top equals friction static. That's friction at the bottom. Okay. Um, sum of all forces on the y-axis equals zero. So this means that n bottom equals mg. The two cancel. So n bottom equals mg. And the I can write more equations. Now I can write torque equations. Sum of all torques at any point p equals zero. And there are three points here where I might want to write this. Um, there is the point one here at the bottom, two at the, middle, at the middle, and three at the top. These are points where forces happen. Remember, you want to write your torque equations um, about the point where a force happens so you have fewer um, terms when you write out the torque equation. Okay? So let's see. Here we want to find the normal force at the bottom of the ladder. This one is the easiest thing to find. That's why I put it here first. Normal at the bottom is just mg. Here we have mg, so n bottom is m 10 ng 
we're going to use 10 as well for G, and this is going to be 100 newtons. So that's easy. Um, this is just 100 newtons. Now, what about the normal force at the top of the ladder? So this whole thing here is done. Um, the normal force at the top of the ladder, to solve for that, I would need to know static friction. I would need to know static friction. I don't have enough information just yet to find static friction. Um, so I don't have mu. Um, I do have normal at the bottom. I don't have mu. Um, and I wouldn't be able to use that anyway. So um, normal at the top, to find that, I'm going to have to write a torque equation because this here is not enough. So we're going to write a torque equation. And if you want normal at the top, if you want normal at the top, you want to write a torque equation with your axis being somewhere else. The reason being, you want your end top to show up on the equation. If you put the axis of rotation here, then there will be no torque due to normal at the top, and it won't be part of the equation. So we're going to carefully select our axis to be one of the other two points. Um, I'm going to pick the bottom here. And I'm going to pick that point because that point is actually the best of the two to pick. Remember, you want to do it. You want to write the torque equation about a point with as many forces as possible, so that you have as few terms as possible. There are two forces acting at point one. Only one force acting at point two. Point one is definitely the best one to write a torque equation about it. So sum of all torques at point one equals zero. There are two torques there. I'm going to draw this. So here's point one. Here's the, um, here's the ladder. I have mg acting here, and then I have n top acting here, okay? The r vector from here to mg looks like this. Um, from the axis to mg looks like this, and then from the axis to n top looks like this. The bottom one has a length of two, and the top one has a length of four, half and the total distance. The angle that I'm supposed to use is not the 53 right here, but instead I'm supposed to use the 37 right here. That's what we're going to use, okay? We're going to use theta equals 37. For this one here, I'm supposed to use this angle, and if this is 30, if this is 53, then this is 53 as well, okay? So they have different r's and different thetas. You have to be very careful here, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. Let's keep going here. Um, I'm going to say that this torque is going this way, torque of mg, and the torque of normal is going that way. And I'll show you that in just a second. Okay? So imagine you have um, your ladder looks like this. mg is pushing down, so it's trying to cause a rotation this direction, in this direction right here. And this is clockwise, so it's negative. Normal at the top is pushing this way. It's trying to cause a, ro a rotation this direction, um, and this is positive, so there you go. They're canceling each other, so I can write the torque of N top equals torque of Mg. Now I'm going to expand both equations. Torque N top is N top, it's R vector and sine of its theta. Mg is Mg, R vector, sine of theta. The R vector for N top is four, four meters long. Um, for MG, it's two meters long. The sine for N top right here, between N top and its R vector is 53, and this one is 37, okay? I have MG, I can find the signs, so I'll be able to find N top, okay? N top will be M, which is 10 G, which is 10 times 2, sine of 37 is 0 0.6, divided by 4, divided by sine of 53, which is 0 0.8. And if you multiply all of this, you get 37.5 newtons, 37.5 newtons, okay? As soon as I get this, um, I will be able to know, um, as soon as I know N top, I know friction static as well. Friction static is the same thing as N top, so it's going to be 37.5, just the same. So this was N bottom, this is N top, and this is friction. So if I scroll up over here, 37.5, 
let me put this here normal top at the top sorry normal force at the top 37.5 newtons frictional force at the bottom of the ladder 37.5 newtons as well now i want to know the minimum coefficient of static friction needed so i'm looking for mu static min all right um, just ignore the min all you're really looking for is mu static plugging it into here so we're going to say friction static is 37.5 you know that the equation for friction static is mu static normal right so this gets replaced with mu static normal equals 37.5 now do i use normal bottom or normal top what do you think friction is over here so you use normal bottom okay so mu static will be 37.5 divided by normal bottom normal bottom was 100 so mu is going to be 0 0.375 Remember, mu is supposed to be a number between 0 and 1. I got a number between 0 and 1, so I have higher confidence that this is correct. This is, in fact, the right answer. Um, so that is mu, which, by the way, this is part D. Um, here we found this is A, and then somewhere here we found B and C together. So the coefficient here is 0 0.375 unitless. And I want to know the total contact force at the bottom of the ladder. So what's the deal with that? Look at the bottom of the ladder. There are two forces, in bottom and friction static. So one thing you might be asked is for the total force, which is simply the vector addition between these two. So it's going to look something like this. All right, let me clean that up a little bit. And we're going to draw that out here. So the total contact force is just a combination of the two forces at the bottom. So part E total contact force you're going to have in bottom which is 100 you're going to have friction static 37.5 and then the total contact force i'm going to call this f bottom is what we're looking for this is just basic vector addition we're going to use the pythagorean theorem to combine these two okay so f bottom is just the square root of 100 squared because this because of this number plus this square 37.5 squared okay and if you do this you get 107 newtons which is the magnitude of this force uh, i'm gonna just solve for one more thing it wasn't asked here but i could have asked also uh, what is the uh, direction of the bottom force of the total force at the bottom so theta bottom remember this is just vector stuff is the arc tangent of the y force divided by the x force the y force is 100 the y force is i'm sorry the y force is 100 the x force is 37.5 and if you do the arc tangent of this you get 69 degrees okay which means it's 69 degrees is right here um 69 um Anyway, that's it for this one. So these are all the classic things you would be asked uh, on a ladder, on a basic ladder question. Um, hopefully this makes sense. And let me know if you have any questions. Let's keep going.